Earth Science time. <laughs> Earth Science time. Uh, today we're going to talk about, um, what should we call it? Streams and floods. Is that too thin, do you think? That's too thin. I think so too, Natalie. Uh, ooh, that made it better. Let's use the fat marker. Okay, streams and floods. So the first thing we're going to talk about is something called stream load. Stream load. Well, first of all, before we talk about the thing I just said we're going to talk about first, what's a stream? It's a what? It's a smaller version of a river. Yeah, really, that's as good a definition as any. It's a, it's a body of water that's moving. How does it move? Yeah, but what, like, you've been, yeah, downhill. We, I mean, there's slightly more to it than that, but in general, almost all the time it moves downhill. What it really does, and we'll talk about this when we talk about groundwater, but it moves from what we call high head pressure to low head pressure, which um, really doesn't matter usually for a stream because it's all at roughly the same pressure, but in general it moves downhill. So a stream is a body of water flowing downhill. Um, it's like Levi said, a, a, we can think of it as a small version of a river. So if we're talking about stream load, what are we probably talking about being in the stream? I was going to write it, but I wanted you to say it before I wrote it. What kind of things are going to be in the stream that we're going to be talking about in earth science? Rock. Sediment. Sediment in the stream. Or specifically, sediment being moved by, being moved by the stream. And we have, a even, we have an even specialer word for being moved by that we use in our science. What is it? S sediment, yeah, sediment being eroded by the stream. Sediment on its way from place A to place not A, somewhere else, right? It's being eroded. This is going to hopefully, it's going to hopefully remind you of how we talked about um, the way that sediment can move in Neolian erosion, which was wind erosion, but there are several ways that sediment can move in uh, in a stream. What we call, and this kind of erosion, remember, we call fluvial. Fluvial erosion is when something is eroded by running water. Um, and there are some. Let's, there's going to be four ways that that things can be carried along by a river, right? There's going, to be, there's going to be four ways that things can be carried along by a river. The first of them, like I said, these should remind you. Let's actually do this one first. It can be moved in solution, which we didn't talk about with the Eolian erosion because it doesn't really apply to Eolian erosion, but in solution, meaning it has been what? Sediment that has been... Yeah, exactly right. Sediment that has been dissolved. So what do you think what kind of properties are we going to look at? Uh, I'm going to give some examples here. What kind of properties are we going to look at to determine whether a certain sediment can be dissolved in the stream or not? Is it going to apply? Is it going to depend on its grain size mostly? Say no. No, it's going to depend on what it is, right? Because not everything dissolves in water. What kind of things do dissolve in water? We've talked about this repeatedly. Salt. So the mineral. What do we call the mineral that salt is? No. That's another one we're going to talk about though. Say that one first. Calcite. Calcite. That's not what salt is, but calcite can be carried in solution, right? It can be dissolved by water, and the, the word that we use to call salt is halite. There are more minerals than just that. These are just examples. Many different kinds of minerals can be carried in solution, but they have to be able to be dissolved in water. And that makes sense, right? It can't be, it can't be dissolved in water if it can't be dissolved in water. That's, that's all there is to it. Um, so something like usually sandstone, right, which is made of silicate minerals, can't be carried in solution because it doesn't dissolve in water. Good? Okay, I'm going to trust that that's good. The other three are all the same ones that we talked about um, for Eolian origin. And these are kind of going from, we wouldn't say small grain size, but like small particle size to large. So very, very small particles. like. Um, if you are in chemistry or if you have taken chemistry, you know that when something is dissolved in water, what happens is the water molecules have a, a polarity, right? They have a negative end and a positive end, and it rips apart the bonds that hold that thing together. So calcite is made out of ions, and when the water interacts with it, it pulls the calcite apart, right? And so it's, it's really just, we can think of the particle sizes, it's just little ions in solution. So they're tiny, tiny, tiny little particles, infinitesimally small. Um, 
So if the particles are larger, but not necessarily large enough to be seen, we can call it suspension. Oh, the marker is dying. Suspension. And you remember this from Miolan erosion, right? This is when the particles or sediment stays afloat the entire time, right? Where it's being carried along in the river. Stays, I don't know, I don't really want to say afloat because they don't have to float, but it stays off the bed. If I use the word bed here, do you know what I mean? Like the bottom of the stream, right? Stays off the bed for long distances, right? It's being suspended, just like it was with Eolian erosion. You can probably think about what the next one will be. Do you remember what we called that next one? So it would, it's not carried the whole time. Mm -mm. It was lifted by the action of the river and then dropped, and then lifted again and then dropped. you remember what that, the... It was jumping. Yeah, jumping is what it means, but we have a special Latinate word for it. Saltation is what it was. Saltation is where it's repeatedly lifted and dropped, right? Giving it a kind of jumping motion, which is where the remember we talked about how the word saltate comes from the same root Latinate word as saute, which is when you jump the little onions in the pan, right? It doesn't have to be onions. And then the fourth, what happens to the largest particles that are being moved? They are rolled. So in contrast to suspension, where they were off the bed for long distances, this is where they're carried on the bed. Carried on the bed. Okay, um, what what shape of sediment does this imply? What what shape of sediment do you think it has to kind of be round-ish, right? It can't. Rocks that are completely flat don't roll. They can instead of rolling, they can slide, um, which would, would fall into the same category. We wouldn't call it rolling, obviously, but the same size sediment, if it were flat, would slide instead. Okay, so these um, for a given, just like we talked about with the Eolian erosion, for a given speed of a stream, smaller size sediments going up this list, right? So large sediments, if, if very large sediments, like if pebbles can be rolled, what size sediment can probably be saltated? Sand. And if sand can be saltated, what size pebbles, or not pebbles, what size sediment is in suspension? Probably silt, right? Um, and silt and clay would be suspended, right? And there might be some stuff dissolved too, calcite and halite. Um, if instead, if sand is what's being rolled, then what's gonna be saltated? Silt and, and suspended will be clay sized particles. Are you all good on that? Yes. If sand sized particles are being rolled, then probably silt size are being saltated and clay size are being suspended. If, if like in a, a lake, maybe, which is not a stream obviously, but like in a lake, if silt, is, silt sized particles are all only going to be rolled, or maybe even clay sized particles are going to be rolled, maybe nothing is in suspension or saltated. And that's, that's when you get beautiful, clear lake water, right? Like if you go to somewhere with a beautiful, clear lake or the beautiful, clear ocean, it's because either there are no small sediments to, to muck it up, or it's moving so slowly that even the small sized sediments are just sitting on the bottom and then nothing else has the energy to be moved. Kind of like you all don't have the energy to be moved today. What's okay, to what's that supposed to mean? Okay, um, now we're going to talk about something called carrying capacity. I'm going to shift colors here because this one's dying. Can you see the red? Okay, carrying capacity. Not really. Carrying capacity. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess it's okay. It's, it's more a problem with my handwriting than the color of the marker, come to find out. Um, um, the first thing we're going to talk about with carrying capacity, so the carrying capacity is basically just what can be moved, right? So it relates very neatly into this, it's just what can be moved. Uh, what do you think, what do you think in general are the properties of a stream that can make it so it can carry more or larger sediment? Yeah, so speed, Let's, I'm going to let carrying capacity, I'm going to label this carrying capacity factors because I've already started my list. Speed of the stream, what else? Um, I like how deep it is. Okay, depth, what else? One other thing. 
So remember, we're talking about, yeah, the slope affects the speed, right? So the higher the slope, the higher the speed um, for a given amount of water. But remember, we're not just talking about the size of sediment. We're talking about the total amount of sediment, too. So what else might affect it? How what the river is or how what the stream is? The, you're getting closer, but that's not right. That affects the speed as well. We're going to talk about meanders and and that's all of these. So the speed, the depth, and the what if you have a little bit of width, 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 right? The the a narrow little stream. Generally, they're moving faster, but they're they can't carry as much stuff because they're not as wide. So with these three things, we can get we have a little mathematical formula where we can get something called discharge. And the discharge uh, of a stream is how much stuff, how much water it moves, what volume of water it moves in a given amount of time. Um, it's a pretty easy calculation, but discharge, which we're just going to label capital D, equals the stream's speed, S, times its depth, lowercase d, times its width, cursive W. What, um, where capital D is discharge, and we're going to talk about its unit in a second. S, what's what's the S stand for? I just said speed measured in what units in the SI? Say it again. Meters per second. Lowercase d we said was depth. What do we measure depth in in the SI? Meters. And width, sorry, W is width, and we measure that in meters as well. So if we take meters times meters times meters per second, what do we end up with? What's our unit? Meters cubed per second. Meters cubed per second. Meters cubed per second. What, do, what kind of unit, what kind of unit is meters cubed? What, what, well, centimeters cubed, that's a unit of what? Uh, volume. Volume. So really, discharge is, a, is volume per unit time. It's how much stuff is going through the river in a unit of time, right? Um, in 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 a crazy people's unit system like the imperial system, for instance, we would measure this as something like gallons per, usually gallons per hour is how they measure it. It's, it's huge numbers, um, but it's volume units divided by time units is the discharge of a stream. Uh, so, the higher the discharge, does that necessarily mean it can it can carry bigger sediments? No, the speed is what determines the size of the sediments, but the higher the discharge, the more sediment by amount, right? So something like the Mississippi River, you know, have you ever heard of the Mississippi River? I know, I know you know how to spell it. <laughs> That's wrong, but yeah, the Mississippi River has a huge discharge. It has a lot of water flowing through every second, but it doesn't actually move very fast. The, high, the largest size sediment it moves may be sand. Um, usually not even that, usually silt. It's moving quite slowly, but it moves so much sediment because it's so both wide and deep. Okay, um, floods, you know what a flood is. Do you know what a flood is? Yeah. It's when the, the, the river has something called a bank. We're just, just, so, just FYI, you're, you're, we're shifting gears here, we're talking about floods. Um, and the river has something called a bank, right, where it's the normal kind of, we call this the channel where the river flows. And we call this the like the lip of the channel we call the bank. And it has a, a bank because it's been digging out this channel for I was about to say its entire life. It's not alive. For the whole time that the river has been there, it's been digging out this channel. And if the enough water, if the discharge increases enough, that the river what we call breaks its banks, right? If the river overflows the banks, that's called a flood. So here's regular river and then a flood. Oh, I kinda did that. Not very good. I'm trying to draw the same exact. There we go. Flood. Ah, flood. Um, what, what's scary about flood is that uh, it's got a lot of water. And if you live in a house, like some of us do, if you live in a house and the flood comes along, your house can be swept away, depending on the size of the flood. Right. In, in, the, in general, uh, are the floods here and in most places strong enough to wash your house away? Now, what happens if there's a flood? Maybe. Yeah, you, you might get water in your basement, which would be kind of sad, um, but your house is probably not going to be washed away. There are something, and your book talks about this, but there are something called 10-year um, floods and 100-year floods, which are not, it's not like every 100 years there's going to be this, you know, like on December, nope, November 30th, 
1920, there was a flood that washed away someone's house. So then on December, nope, November 30th, 2020, there's going to be the same flood. That's not how it works. It's just that on average, about once every 100 years, there's a flood bad enough um, to really cause damage. That's called a 100-year flood. Um, I think that should be all. Flood? Yes or no? You know about it? Yeah. Carrying capacity? Discharge, can you calculate this? Could you do math with this, do you think? Yeah. Yeah, you, just, you would just write this down, right? Plug in your numbers, substitute in your numbers. You shouldn't say plug in. Substitute your numbers in, and then calculate it in meters cubed per second. And then you understand, this, was, this is kind of a review from Eolian erosion, right? You have questions about any of this? No. Okay, fine. Okay, fine.